Thank you very much. Don't worry, I am the last one. <laughs> I try to respect your tiredness and your hunger. <laughs> uh, thank you for giving me the floor and this um, as important as needed, mm, as needed really, uh, conference. I will express some words on, the beh on behalf of the community of San Egidio, uh, which is engaged since about 50 years in the field of interreligious dialogue, of peace negotiation in several countries of the world, of solidarity with the poorest of the world in a number of struggles for defense of life and human rights. War and poverty are strictly connected. As stated several times, Andrea Riccardi, war is the mother of all poverty. We are uh, aware of the particularly dramatic moment that our world is going through. The number of conflicts has increased and they spread the most diverse forms of violence, often out of any possible control. Conflict, violence, and racism have returned to Europe and to the United States, States as well, thanks to some mm, I mean, uh, candidate to the presidency in the last times. Anyway, the struggle of the Middle East has failed while persecuted refugees flee from northern Iraq, Syria is prey to devastating and inhuman war. These sorrowful story, stories declare the re-legitimization of war as a tool as well as a new mixture of religion and violence. And war and violence are turning more and more inhuman. The exhibition of acts of cruelty in this global era are used as a weapon to slaughter and to exhibit the horror. This is true terrorism. The global world, as someone wrote, is a land of many fears. It has also noted that our generation, thou gifted with the most advanced technology in history, is the one that experiences insecurity and fear the most. Religion in this global era is almost the only system of ideal motivations that have a transnational dimension. This is one reason why religious motivations and references are exploited to create consensus to organize violence. Indeed, today, religions are called to face in a more mature and responsible way the problem of their relationship with violence. Yes, I would like to stress that religions hold today a crucial responsibility. In our world, more and more weakened and made foolish by consumerism, an inspiration is necessary to bring back hope and guide humankind towards the awareness of a common destiny. Religions remind us that men and women share a common fate. They can generate, promote, and animate enthusiasm for dialogue between men and women, believers and no-believers alike, of every country, age, and culture. Pass me the term enthusiasm for dialogue. The etymological Greek root of enthusiasm is in and theos, which means to have God within. Religion has the strength to set God into the dialogue between people, thus enriching dialogue with spirituality and vision. In this peaceful struggle against war and all forms of violence, I'm convinced that religions today should not only declare, but rather work for the total nuclear disarmament in every corner of our mother heart. In addition, in order to make more effective this battle, a collaboration between religions is extremely valuable and productive. I would like to call the new alliance between religions in the 21st century. It is the right time in which the dialogue between religions has to become a tool to change the world, if possible, and where possible, in close cooperation with the goodwill politicians. In this way, I also interpreted the interesting expression that Koshon Iwano has said last year, we have to upgrade dialogue. Truly. Humanity has lost its human dimension and it has wanted to do without God. Religions have to help the peoples today, believers and not believers, to find the way for seeking God in order to find humanity again. 
This is why dialogue between religions becomes a sort of alliance at the service of humanity. Several times, Pope Francis has spoken out against nuclear weapons. He has spoken very clearly in the past year. In October 2015, during his visit in the United States, he has also pronounced for complete prohibition of nuclear weapons. He called to recognize that there is an urgent need for such work. It is not work for a distant day or work that can be put off to another time. The matter is urgent. The need is great. He also calls for the full application of the No Proliferation Treaty in letter and spirit. He added that all of creation, including humankind, is placed at the risk by the more than 15,000 nuclear weapons, exactly 16,960 today, still in our planet. The Pope effectively dismisses nuclear deterrence as a justification for nuclear weapons. He states, an ethics and law based on the threat of mutual destruction and possibly the destruction of all mankind are self-contradictory and an affront to the entire framework of the United Nations, which would end up as nations united by fear and distrust. As a community of San Egidio, we feel close to these words, and we renew our commitment to the fight in favor of nuclear disarmament here in Japan as anywhere in the world. I would simply recall in conclusion that in this period, on the 6th of August 2015, in Hiroshima, in close collaboration with Religion for Peace Japan and the Japan Religious Committee for World Federation, we had promoted an important event. It was the Nuclear Disarmament Symposium on the 70th anniversary of the atomic bomb under the title, you remember, War Never Again, Religions, Cultures and Dialogue for a Future of Peace. We declared on that occasion in the final appeal, we must become servants for the common good of humanity so that people's memory of atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki never fade away. We are convinced that war must never be fought again and that we must do our best to abolish nuclear weapons before they annihilate us. With this renewed confidence, we want to raise a message of peace which can reach every land, especially those still wounded by war and violence. With them and for them, we say war never again. Hiroshima, August 6, 2015, on the 70th anniversary of the atomic bomb. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>